continuing the series of weekly contest here comes the second question in the queue minimum consecutive cards to pick up here in this question we are given an array of integers that represents the card values what we need to do we need to identify the minimum number of consecutive cards that you have picked up to have a pair of matching cards among the picked up cards if it is not possible then we have to return minus 1 in those cases so let's walk through an example and get a good hold of the concept so we need to identify that range of cards where are you are able to identify a pair of same cards for example this is the first range you can see that three occurs twice in this range as a result of it one possibility of answer becomes four other possibility of answer again becomes four in this particular range you can see that four occurs twice as a result of it this is a valid range of uh, cards that you can pick up uh, there is no other possibility out of these two you are going to pick select the one which has minimum length uh, both since both the lengths are four four becomes the answer here you can see that there is no duplication happening of any of the card value as a result of it the answer becomes minus 1 i'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it by the presentation so let's quickly hop on to it lead code double to 60 minimum consecutive cards to pick up it's a medium level question on lead code and i also feel the same also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general please feel free to ping on the telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded both the links are mentioned in the description below so let's get started i have taken a slightly longer example so that you get a good hold of the concept the elements are 342 347 4 3 8 what would be the answer for this particular example the answer would be length 3 here you can see that 4 occurs twice as a result of which the length becomes 3 and this becomes our answer how to solve this up it's really simple what i'm going to do i'll create an array that will store the last index occurrence of each element present in my cards array how is it going to help us help us up let's walk through an example so that we get a good hold of the understand of the concept so by default the last occurrence will be set to an index value of minus 1 that means we haven't visited or seen this element in the past the first value that we see happens to be 3 so we what we are going to do we'll check what is the last occurrence index of 3 it is still minus 1 that means we haven't seen 3 in the past as a result of which what we are going to do we'll simply update the index to 0 let's proceed ahead next we see is 4 at 4 we check what was the last occurrence the last occurrence was minus 1 that means it hasn't occurred in the past as a result of which we'll simply update this to 1 let's proceed ahead next we see is 2 so has 2 occurred in the past no So let's update the index to two, which is the current iterating index. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is three. So let's check whether three occurred in the past. Yes, three did occur in the past. How can we identify this? Because the value here is zero, which is not equal to minus one. Therefore, we found out the first possibility of answer. How can we calculate the corresponding length with respect to uh, the pair of three that we have identified? It's really simple. Uh, what is the current index that we are at? The current index is three. What was the last occurrence of three? It was zero, minus zero plus one. So this gives us the length. This is simple. One minus i minus last occurrence plus one is the formula to be used to identify the length, and this will equate to four. So the first possibility of answer turns out to be four. Pretty great. Let's proceed ahead. Along with this, don't forget. to update the last occurrence uh, last occurrence index for 3 what was what is the last occurrence of index of 3 now it gets updated to 3 so let's update this value to 3 let's proceed ahead next we see is 4 uh, has 4 occurred in the past yes 4 did occur in the past we can see that the index happens to be 1 here let's apply the same formula uh, which is i minus last occurrence plus 1 so what is the current value of i the current value of i is 4 4 minus 1 plus 1 gives you 4 again so other possibility of answer again becomes 4 Uh, let's update this value this value gets updated to 4 let's proceed ahead next we see is 7 so let's check whether 7 has occurred in the past or not 7 has it occurred in the past so let's update the index to 5 because here the index is 5 let's proceed ahead next we see is again a 4 so has 4 occurred in the past yes it did occur in the past what was the last occurrence index that was 4 so let's apply the same formula uh, and let's calculate the length i minus 4 plus 1 so i minus 4 plus 1 what does this give you this gives you 3 so the possibility of answer becomes 3 which signifies this particular length let's proceed ahead uh, let's update the index to 6 and next we see is 
so has three occurred in the past so yes three ha does occur in the past and what was the index the index was three so let's apply the same formula seven minus three plus one what does this give you this gives you five so the possibility of answer becomes five which signifies this particular length let's proceed ahead let's update the index to seven and the next element that we see is eight does eight occur in the past no it doesn't occur so let's simply go and update this eight let's up let's proceed ahead next we see is nine so nine also doesn't occur in the past so let's update the quick the index to nine out of all the possibilities five four four three which one is the lower one the lowest one is the three one so the answer becomes three which is in sync with our expectation and to conclude it further let's quickly walk through the coding section the time complexity of this approach is order of n and space complexity is constant time here i have created an array that will store the last index for each element present in my cards array and the size is decided by uh, this hint that was specified in the question that the value of cards can start from 0 up till 10 raised to the power 6 So I've used the, the array size to be of 10 to the power 6 plus 1. I filled the entire array with minus 1 value. I've taken an answer variable that will help us identify whether answer exists in my cards array or not. And by default, I've been initialized it to the maximum value. What do I do? I start the iteration and I check whether the last index for the current card happens to be minus 1 in nature. If it doesn't happen to be minus 1 in nature. what what have i identified i have identified one possibility of the answer and the current length would correspond to i minus last index for the card's value plus 1 so this would give us the length and what we are going to do we'll identify the minimum length out of the uh, length that we have seen so far once we are done with this if condition what i'm going to do i'll update the last index for this particular card to be at i once i'm out of the loop i'll simply going to check whether my answer happens to be equal to maximum value if it is then uh that simply means the answer doesn't exist in my input cards array i have to return minus 1 in those cases otherwise i return the answer value that has been calculated somewhere here so let's try this up accepted awesome time complexity is order of n where n signifies the length of the input string and the space complexity is order of 1 because you are using constant space of this much size With this, let's conclude this session. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead, and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you in some time with the rest of the questions.